All right, so I wanted to make a video on adding Swagger or the Open API documentation tool thing. And to do so, we're gonna use Yarn or NPM to install uh, two packages. The first one's gonna be Yarn add uh, NestJS slash Swagger, and then we also need the UI library, which is swagger-ui-express and let that install and the reason why we want the express version is because nest.js is built on top of express um, by default you can change it to another node library like fastify i believe is being offered i'm unsure if something else like koa might be but um for those, you will also need to get the specific Swagger uh, libraries for that. But once you do that, um, we could now import uh, the Swagger NestJS thing in the NestJS Swagger. Uh, and make sure that we're inside the main file or for the bootstrap file, the entry file, whatever you want to call it. And we're gonna create a, an options variable here. So call options, and it's gonna want to be a new document builder from Swagger. Why is this red? From, well, there we go. And the document builder is where we're just gonna set the uh, title and description of the API documentation. All right, so we're gonna do set title here, and this is um, the conduit API, which is a blog. So I'm gonna do blog, um, and then there's also set description, which we could do conduit. Cloud API, and from the uh, was it the README? Here we go. The Swagger JSON from the real world repo. There's other things that you can add. Um, like I'm, I think I'm gonna add the version. So we can do dot set version here, and it's gonna be one dot zero dot zero. And then finally, the last method that you want to add to the chain is build. And I will build the options. Next, um, do we do the, yeah. So we're gonna actually create the uh, document now, document. And it's gonna be swagger module dot create document where we're passing in, uh, both the app and the options that we created. The app being the API that we uh, were working on this entire time. And and then finally, we need to initialize that. So yeah, it's gonna be setup. And the first argument is gonna be the path that we're gonna take over inside of our application. And I'm gonna just use API and then Next is going to be app and document so that the Swagger module knows about our application as well as the document that we want to send. And now, if we do a yarn start as well as opening up a browser, um, I'm going to do Chromium. And then once you have your browser open, um, you can go to localhost at the port that you set and then slash API, because that's where our documentation will live. What is this? Oh, okay. Just some type stuff. So once you start using the correct types and everything, your server will start, and uh, you'll get this. And you'll notice that um, a endpoint has been created on every single uh, schema. And... I guess we have a schema already. Uh, register detail is, it has nothing, but that's fine. 
But um, we can start adding some descriptions here. So right now, uh, let's go with something that's useful. So let's go to register. Uh, we have a empty uh, object because we don't know what the detail is. And we also have uh, empty descriptions. So we could start adding those using decorators from the Swagger package. So let's go to slash API slash users, which if you remember, that's the register route. So we'll go here and open up the user, no, not the user, uh, auth controller. And we're gonna import from that's just swagger, not schematics, swagger, and a couple of things. So we could add the decorator of API created response, uh, which for which is shorthand for API response, and then adding status of two hundred one. Um, the shorthand is that the created means 201 so yeah and then we can add in a description here using a string or we could do description and let's go with uh, user registration and similarly we could do the same thing for login and this is a API OK response Okay, meaning 200. Description, user login, and w not semicolon. Um, and we also know that there's a unauthorized uh, request. So we do unauthorized. And the description here being like uh, invalid credentials. We get rid of this unused property and if we go into the swagger UI now this is just normal HTML so it's not gonna be hot reloaded so you will have to do a hard reload and we have user registration here which is the description that we added and then we also added these two for login we have a 401 which is unauthorized and we have user login which is what this route is for now let's start working on the schemas. All right, let's jump back into our app. And we know that um, the DTO is gonna be what we're expecting in the body of our request. So that's where we're gonna do a lot of our work. Um, so let's open up the user models and I guess we're not using that. And let's import more stuff from at Nestia's Swagger. And the decorators that we're gonna wanna use are API property. And I believe that this is just gonna be type of string. And we can also add the description of email. Um, one thing to note is that Swagger is built on JavaScript and not TypeScript. So what you have to add here is the JavaScript type, not the TypeScript type. So make sure to capitalize your string. Um, and then here it's gonna be API property uh, type string. Description is password. And then we can do the same thing for the register. And then there's one last thing we need to add to our controller. Uh, so back here to make sure that it recognizes the body. So let me see if I still remember what it's called. API body, body, here we go. And this is where we're gonna add the um, type of, this is register DTO. And we can do the same thing for login. API body type uh, login DTO. If we save and then 
go to the Swagger UI and do another refresh. Um, we will have an example of the the request body schema. And obviously this is required, which makes sense. And then also in registration, you'll also see that this has the username path or the username path that login does it. So we are using different schemas here. And we can also see them down here. So there's our register DTO, there's our login DTO. And as you can imagine, uh, this is going to be the basic workflow of adding documentation to your application. Um, so it's mostly just going to be adding decorators to everything. There is one that I want to show off. So let's go into article, article controller. And let's make sure we add Swagger again. And what I want to do is make sure that we hide um, one of these behind authentication. So let's do it for feed. So this is going to be API um, bear auth in here. And I think that's all we need to do. So let's save that and check our UI again. And what route was that? That's slash feed. So if we do refresh and then go down to article slash feed, we'll get like this little lock button, which means that this route needs authentication. Uh, we can't try it out yet because we need to add the ability to set a token within our UI. So to do that, we're going to jump back to the main file or our entry file and let's go find that. And we're going to need to add uh, one more option. So this is going to be add bear auth. And remember that this application has a different scheme. It's not going to be bear token. It's going to be token and then the token. Um, so to do that, I have to remember what this looks like. Uh, is, yeah. So the first parameter we need to set is authorization, which is the header that we're going to look in. So I was reading the wrong documentation. <laughs> so which happens sometimes, but the add bear auth takes in two, uh, two properties. The first one is going to be the security options which for us is going to be of type HTTP. Um, the scheme is going to be bear because we're going to expect it to be a bear token. But then the token prefix is going to be token and not bear, which is the norm. And then the second option is, or the second parameter is just a name that we want to give it. So once we do that and refresh, uh, we should have a little green button to authorize and when we click it this is going to be the access token and it's going to be of type bear but the value here is going to be token and then whatever token we're going to give it and then we just press authorize after that and then log out of course i don't know why my webcam keeps changing aspect ratios anyways um so all right so i've uh, made the changes and added all of these uh, decorators to every method in the controllers of our application. And I had to update our data models so that you'll see here I added an API property to uh, enveloping body object that has our DTO inside of it. And once all of that's done, you can then do a uh, you want to start dev and start the server and this is going to be a example of what your swagger documentation should look like after you added all of these properties so we have the authorize we have little locks on a lot of these things and then if we open up um i don't know something like users we can do a try it out and it'll show us 
what comes back this right now is unauthorized because we have to be authorized for it but let's go to something that we don't so let's do api slash articles which will list all the articles and we could just try it out execute and we'll get right now nothing because there's nothing in the database but if we look at something with the body um it should list out the data transfer object or the expected body of the request and then also a slug that we could add we could do something like that change up the body and then execute it and we should get some stuff back um, and here's all the data transfer objects here's the body for create article and here's the DTO of said create article all right um, I'd encourage you to do the work and add documentation to your APIs using Swagger if you can. And this was just an example of how you can do it. I'll see you guys next time and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye.